Welcome back to Real Terms for AI with Aja and Jason and the light board. This thing has been super fun to take all of the ideas that we have when we're talking and get them out there for everyone to see. So what are we gonna talk about this week? So I thought it would be interesting to dig into the architecture of an agent I built to solve a problem I have. And I know it seems simple, but sometimes when I'm trying to set up a group dinner and you've got a bunch of friends who have a bunch of likes and dislikes, finding a place to go is really, really hard. Is it actually that hard though? Maybe not for you, but I lack creativity when I'm put on the spot. And so I always just suggest tacos. And apparently not everyone loves tacos as much as you and I do. So I brought in Gemini to help. And today I wanna to walk through the process of how that agent got designed piece by piece. All right, let's do it. So first thing obviously you said is let's build an agent. Okay. Now, what are we gonna give the agent as inputs? So let's say that I can ask it in text. Uh, let's go to brunch on Sunday. And I want to invite my friends, Alice, Bob, and Charlie. Okay. What's nice about this is we have a number of different things we need to break apart. So let's just start with the top. Okay. Brunch. brunch. I think a large language model probably knows what brunch is. And it probably also knows the approximate time of brunch and when it happens. Yeah, I think we can just assume that the LLM will figure that part out on its own. Perfect. All right, the next question though is what Sunday? Okay, so there's two things that we need to handle here. First is the fact that I've personally experienced that sometimes large language models don't actually know what today is. And so we're gonna need to base it somewhat in reality of the day, current date and time. There's a couple different ways we could have done this. I could have given it a date time tool. Uh, I could have used some sort of service. But what I actually ended up doing is I just ended up augmenting the prompt with the current date. Just dropped in time.now or date.new into the prompt. So that gives us the date. Now you asked which Sunday. Is it this Sunday? Is it next Sunday? And for that, we need to make sure that the agent can go back and forth with the user so that they can have questions and clarify things like that. All right. So we've taken care of the first two things. So we've taken care of brunch. We've taken care of which Sunday this actually is. Now we actually need to get to one of the harder parts, which is how do we figure out where to go? And we probably want a reservation, right? Yep, we need a reservation. So let's kind of talk about what that process would look like. So we need to get availability. We need to uh, get the menus. We need to uh, make the reservation. And then we need to uh, share the details with the user. So that's, that's a bunch of tools. You know, it's only four, but I think one of the things that you mentioned is that we're probably gonna have other things that we need to do just based on, on our prompt here. And this actually looks really contained. So yep. could we make this an agent? Yep, and that's actually what I ended up doing. I ended up making this the reservations agent. And I did that for exactly the reasons you identified. It's self-contained, it has one job. An agent is some code with a job and an LLM if needed. And so having it all contained like that made it easier. And I can reuse this if I need to. So now we've got our reservations agent. So we've handled reserve a reservation. Now the next thing that we also have, if we think of your friends, Alice, Bob, and Charlie, I think one of them probably has dietary restrictions, right? They all have dietary restrictions. Perfect. So we're getting the menu but we also need to actually know what dietary restrictions we're trying to plan around. Yeah, so we're gonna do this with memory and context, something we've talked about a lot. So we're gonna have long-term memory here, and if we don't have all the information we need about their dietary restrictions in long-term memory, we can also pull information from the session memory as well. So we'll have that information, it'll go back to our agent, but that doesn't help us figure out if this menu works for someone who's vegetarian or has a dairy allergy. So to do that, we need to add another tool called eval menu. And what this tool does is it takes a menu and a set of dietary restrictions, and it comes up with a score for how well this menu will work for someone with those dietary restrictions. And because we're using generative AI, it can also come up with a description of things that that person or those people might enjoy at this restaurant. Super cool. Now, one of the things that you did here, though, that I do think actually is pretty interesting. So we have an agent that's getting the menu but we made a tool for this other agent which is evaluating the menu. So why did we split the two apart? Honestly, 
because there's no need for this tool that's making reservations to know anything about my friends. It needs to know how many people are going to brunch, but it's my job as the host, my hosting agent here, to make sure that everyone has something they enjoy or something that they can actually eat. And in this case, this agent doesn't need to know that. It just needs to know that this place is gonna work and then it can go through and make a reservation. Yeah, so this lets us do a separation of concerns here. Perfect. All right, so the last but most important piece, we have three additional friends, but we haven't actually invited them to brunch. Right, so we need to give this a tool that can do invites. And one of the things we can use our long-term memory for is knowing the contact preferences of my friends. Maybe someone wants a text message, someone else wants a calendar invite, someone else actually reads their email and would actually respond to an email. That's not me, but it could be them. So we'll set up that invite tool so that it has access to our long-term memory, information about the people we're inviting, and then my mail, my calendar, et cetera, so that it can send the invites to everyone. Perfect, although I don't think it has carrier pigeon for me, right? It does not have carrier just pigeon. Does, just does email and text. That's okay, we can figure out another way to get pigeons later. All right, so let's walk through this and help to summarize all the cool technical pieces that we use. Okay, so right here, we augmented a prompt with the date. We talked about prompt augmenting. Down here, we've used memory and context to improve the results that the agent gets and make sure that everyone has food they can eat and enjoys the experience. Over here, we extracted an agent with a set of self-contained functionality as a service that our other agent could use, and we've set up a separation of concerns. We added an evaluator here to evaluate whether a given menu works for my group of friends, and we can also potentially use that evaluator again as a final review on everything before those invites are set. And then finally, we gave our agent a tool to interact with the world and do something on my behalf. That is, send out invites to my friends so we can all go get brunch on Sunday. Kind of pulls together everything we've been talking about all season, doesn't it? It does, and although we always say that it's usually just software engineering, in this case, this is just process engineering. We listed out everything that we would have to do as people, and then we took it and logically broke it apart into agents and tools that we need to automate this process. Yeah, this is how I would think of the process, and we just coded it up. Super cool. All right, we have links below in the description that you can also follow along and deploy a couple of these agents. And with that, this is Aja and Jason signing off and wishing you happy, happy prompting. prompting.